Hey guys, Mr. B here, and um, I'm going to take you to a couple examples of transformations of sine and cos. So this is a typical example that you might see on a common exam, and we've seen many of them throughout the year. And we begin each problem the uh, same way. So we break down our HT, our VT, HS, VS, and my REF. All right, so that's my horizontal translation. Of course, is over here with the um, x, and it's the opposite of what's there. So uh, it's 90. My HT is 90. My VT with the y, and it's the opposite, minus 1. My HS is the reciprocal of the number. So it's inside the brackets here, and that's 1 over 3. Important thing to remember for 2205 students is that sometimes um, these brackets may not be here, and if it's they're not, that means you have to factor first. So you can't have a number in front of the x; it has to be just by itself. Um, my vs is two. Remember your vs always positive, regardless of the fact of the negative sign here or not. Okay, so you take the reciprocal of it; it's two, and uh, that negative sign is reflected here in the area, the reflection. Okay. So, uh, this is how you should begin every one of these problems. From that, we can write our mapping rule. So, that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to write our mapping rule. So, it's xy goes to brackets. So, we start off my horizontal stretch. So, 1 over 3. Um, x plus 90. So, my horizontal translation, comma. Then we represent my, if we have a reflection, we represent it with a negative. And then I have my VS is 2, Y minus 1. Alright, so that is my uh, mapping rule right there. So I started with my uh, scribing my graph, or scribing my equation, now I wrote my mapping rule. Alright, so next step is to figure out the new table of values for this particular uh, equation, this transformation. So we start off with our base table of values. For, because we have a sine function, we start with sine. So we have x, y, and we go 0, 90, 180, <clears throat> 270, and 360. So that is how sine begins, and we all know sine starts at 0. It was 0, 1, uh, 0, negative 1, 0. And that is transformed. Two, using our mapping rule, and generally, again, you can put xy here if you want to, but I generally write what uh, what my mapping rule says up here, and then I have over here. That just reminds me of what I'm getting here. So we start x times one over three. That's just, uh, or sorry, zero times one over three is zero. So we start with ninety. Then we got negative one. Then we have and 90 divided by 3, so that's 30, plus 90, that's 120. And then we have negative 3. And then 180 uh, divided by 3. So that's going to be, let's see, um, 180 divided by 3 is going to be um, 60, plus 90 is 150. And this one's going to be negative 1 again. And we got 270 divided by 3 plus 90. This is going to be 180. So we can see sort of see a pattern here. It's going up by 30. And uh, this one's going to be 210. And we got negative 1 over here. So it's negative times a negative. It's going to be positive 2 minus 1. So that's a positive 1. And then 0 again. So it's going to be back to negative 1. Okay, so this is my new table of values here. Um, so once I get that, now I have the job of graphing it. So we'll go back up to my. Oh, well, I'm going to drag this down here. So uh, first thing I might want to do is make a little table, make a little axis here. Oops. Okay, now that I have my axis drawn, I'm going to put some. Uh, uh, numbers on them, so uh, let's see. Let's 
See, I'm going to fix this a little bit. I'm going to move this over so i got more space. Let's see. So, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. And I'll probably... I got lots of space here to work with, so one, two, one, two, three, one. Okay, so I got zero, thirty, ninety, one, twenty, one, fifty, one, eighty, ten, and one, negative one, negative two, and negative three. So let me graph this thing. We put our points in. So I got 90 and negative 1. So we start right here. And then I got 20 and negative 3. Right here. 150 and negative 1. Back up here. And I got 180 and 1. So way up here. And then back to my sinusoidal axis. 210 and negative 1. So when we draw our graph, I'll change color here. Hopefully I can make this pretty. It looks something like that. And again, you might want to draw another period if it asks you to do that, but it doesn't limit this particular question. So we got our sine, equation drawn. So just recognize that it keeps going on with the same pattern continuously. All right, so that was pretty straightforward. Um, the only thing you got to be careful is when you're drawing your axis. That can be kind of tricky. So. Uh, that might be given to you on a common exam, it might not, so you got to be prepared to do it. Alright, let's try COS, and COS is pretty much the same. Um, it's pretty much the same process. The only difference is, of course, is the table value. So we started off the same way, so we got HT, BT, HS, CS, REF. So I got my HT is 90, my BT it's negative 2. My HS is 2. My VS is 1 over 3. And my REF is yes. Or sorry, no. My REF is not. There's no negative sign there, so it should be no. Alrighty, so REF is no. So I'll write my mapping rule for this one. Exactly the same. So here we go, we have um, 2x, so it's hs times x, plus 90, minus, so 1 over 3, or sorry, comma, 1 over 3, y, and then minus 2. And that's my mapping rule. Now, I'm not going to, I'm going to just basically give you an introduction on this one and why this one is different. So cos has a different table of values of course. We have the same x values. So what we have to keep in mind is that cos starts at a max. So cos starts at 1, then it goes down to 0, then it's down to negative 1. Oops. Leave that negative 1. Then it's to back to zero and it's back to one. So the table of values is slightly different than a um, than a sign. So that's the important thing to keep in mind. So when we're finding our new table of values that affects the shape of the graph. Uh, another thing I want to keep in mind is that a cos curve and a sine curve looks exactly the same. Except the fact when you graph a, a, a cos curve you're getting a slightly different uh, picture of it. You're actually going to get something that looks sort of like this. And I'll just draw a rough sketch of it. It looks something like this. That's not a parabola. That's a cos curve. Just recognize that it keeps going on down this way. Even though we don't have the data points there, they're there. Okay. So I'll give you guys the task of graphing this and finish it. Just recognize that graphing these things are exactly the same. They start with the same process. The only thing that changes is the base table values. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great uh, time studying.